1970, um, I became one of the popular brain drain young people uh, that went to the States and Canada. And um, I was in the IT profession, which has been renamed ICT, that's computer profession. And um, I ended up in, in Canada, in the uh, center of Toronto. And on my first day in, uh, in this new job, as part of the brain drain, uh, when I arrived there, all the staff came up and greeted me very warmly. And they said, can we give you a tip? And I said, yes, of course. And they said, just three words, beware the boss. And I said, well, is he a beast? And they said, he is worse than a beast. He is a Baptist. <laughs> Shortly after then, the boss came over to greet me and I was sort of standing there in fear and trembling. And his first words were, what are you doing for Christmas? And I thought, well, I must be doing a hundred things for Christmas, but I couldn't think of one. And he said, great, that's confirmed it. You're, you're coming uh, to spend Christmas with my wife and my family and our two boys and we're going to have a lovely Christmas together. And I went, oh. But then I thought, well, the subject of religion is probably going to arise over Christmas. So I wanted um, uh, to prepare my lines properly. And I tried to look back uh, and see how much Christianity I'd come across in the past. And I looked back to my Navy days. And uh, no, there wasn't any there. Uh, and I looked back to my school days and I, I thought, yes, I can remember a public school, I was done. And what that meant was um, uh, you were paraded into some cathedral and the Archbishop of Canterbury, you went up one by one and the Archbishop of Canterbury plonked his hand on your head and uh, you were done. And I thought, well, that's really good. Those are my lines for Christmas. So I went up there and was greeted very warmly by my boss and his wife and their kids. And as I went into their home, I felt there was just such a, a spirit of love in their home that I'd never ever experienced before. Uh, you could almost cut it with a knife, it was so thick. And uh, I was really sort of starting to enjoy the Christmas there. And then of course, inevitably the question came up, where are you in your walk of faith? And I thought, well, I've got my lines prepared. And I said, well, you know, as when I was at school, I was confirmed by the Archbishop of Canterbury, and he's the top Christian. So that must make me quite a, quite a high Christian, I think. <laughs> and my boss looked at me straight in the eye, and he pointed his finger at me, and he said, you are a sinner. And unless you repent, you are going straight to the pit of hell. And I thought, gosh, that's very uncharitable. And I, I felt I could almost punch him on the nose. I felt he was just so rude. And yet something that he said uh, struck deep into my heart. It's almost as if he put a sword into my heart. And um, I just had to contemplate what he'd said. And then on Christmas afternoon, uh, they were taking the boys out to bargaining in Canada. And they said, do you want to come along? And I said, no, I just really prefer just to be on my own and you know just to uh, enjoy the peace and it was on Christmas afternoon 1970 that I knelt down alone in their living room I didn't know what to do or what to say but I said Lord Jesus if you're there please forgive me my sins and come into my life and from that moment I felt a, a real change in my life that something happened and I can look back to that day and, and every day has been the same since so I really praise the Lord for that. And it's changed my life because as a result of that, um, I felt I wanted to go to Bible school. Um, I had great difficulty getting into Bible school because all the ones I applied for, they said, what do you know about the Bible? And I said, nothing. And they said, well, we're a Bible school. You have to know something about the Bible to come to Bible school. Uh, but in the, in the end, uh, there was one Bible school, Elam Bible College, that uh, very graciously took me, even though I didn't know anything about the Bible and uh, I qualified and uh, came out and I really felt that the Lord had put uh, a burden on my heart for 
young people who had drug problems and together with my wife we went into uh, a drug ministry and we've always had a heart for the poor uh, we're helping to start the food bank with, with Heather and others uh, and that we've really got a burden for the poor and disabled and disadvantaged so that's what the Lord has put on my heart I thank you very much for listening to me